Hi there, welcome back to Not Another Budget. I'm Nicole and on this channel I'm attempting to cash budget my way out of debt and fix several years of financial misbehaviour and if that is something you're interested in following along with please do consider liking and subscribing and checking out the other content that I've created for you. It really does mean a lot to have you here and with me. Now there was no Savings Challenge Sunday video yesterday that's because I didn't spend any cash last week so I had no coins to put away so to speak and I still need to figure out what's going on with the video from the week before last because for some reason the format is not doing whatever it needs to do to work and it's my shortest video to date that's not a short it's like five and a half minutes so I don't quite know what's gone wrong there when I have time I will try and fix that but what I have today is a savings challenge sort out a bit of a binder tidy and just a long overdue catch up because I know that apart from the short things where you've seen me like going through and going okay this is the organizing this is what I'm doing like you've not really seen a lot from me in terms of the more structured long form this is what's going on content and I've got a lot to fill you up in so sit back grab a coffee or a tea or a hot chocolate or whatever a beverage of your choice it is whatever time it is in the world that you end up watching this this will be released today on the monday and yeah let's just sit back you can chill out do some cleaning while i sort this sort your own challenges out like this is just a nice long sort out catch up chatty style video if you're wanting something more structured to know what's going on with my finances that will be coming later on this week now that i actually have time back again i can do that um and if this type of video is not for you then i'll see you in those ones there no worries but for those of you who have been in contact um hi that's the reason why I need to sort out my savings challenges and I'm not going to say too much uh, there but if you're watching this video you know what it, this means and also to those of you whose videos I have been catching up on particularly Gillian over at Brown Skin Girl um, and Emily at Emily's Budgets I am really like finally caught up today and those are two channels that I really do recommend you head on over and watch but without further ado let's begin now all I'm going to be doing is just pulling out my self-created envelopes, any savings challenges that I've stuffed in there already, I'm going to be putting to one side and then reconfiguring my binders. And I'm just going to chat and move as I go. I'm not going to necessarily explain that, like, this is this savings challenge for this, for example, because it's, it's all going to change and move. So where have I been? That's a diary. That's not even a savings challenge binder. Well, so... I have had an interesting couple of weeks. I obviously finished the film. And when I was working on the film in March, I started to try and consider what I wanted to do long term. What is the next step for Nicole? Where do I want the channel itself to go? How can I give back? How can I develop it and grow it? What can I do in terms of long term income? Where am I at with my debt? Where am I falling short in terms of qualifications and CVs and just all of those really, really big questions? So I did a bit of soul searching and spoke to some people and did an awful lot of if I buy you a coffee, can I have 20 minutes of your time? Um, and I really recommend that if you want to put yourself into into the orbit of someone whose advice you're after or someone you really really admire or someone who's an expert in their field who's not a family member and therefore has a bias who doesn't know you but you really want to just pick their brains offer to buy them a coffee um and just say look can i have 20 minutes half an hour of your time i really want to pick your brains about this and go in with intelligent questions and that's what i did so i took the decision middle of March to look at going into teaching and specifically training to be a teacher. Now, the UK system, educational system, how you train to be a teacher is completely different from the US, from the European system. And therefore, a lot of what I'm talking about might not make sense. So just kind of roll with it. But you may need to, if you're not from the UK, go away and do a little bit of extra research if you are curious. I do have coffee as well, so I will be pausing to have coffee today. So in essence, the way our 
university funding education system works is you basically get government administered student loans that get paid direct to the university they are not at the level of interest rate or repayment rate they're not private um the the way you guys get in the us our student loan system is much much more reasonable and that's why you you don't tend to see a lot of uk budgeters kind of aggressively paying down student loans but you tend to only really get one shot at government funded student loans and i had mine i went and got and got my production costume degree like a decade ago i I left university and then went off and did film and tv and costume and retail here and there and dabbled in and out of kind of other jobs here and there and always had in the back of my mind that teaching could be a career option as i got older however the routes into teaching in terms of training to be a teacher the it just wasn't going to be feasible i wouldn't be able to work and trained to be a teacher and therefore I couldn't afford to train to be a teacher I didn't have the disposable funds and the subject that I was interested in which was design and technology did not have really any funding attached to it that I could have pursued that was tangible that was like actually you know I can live off this I don't then need to go and undertake like bar work or cleaning work or anything else as well and essentially do two full-time jobs so I started looking at this pre-pandemic and again kind of realized that actually this is a because of the pandemic going to have to be put on a back burner and then also that i again would not be able to afford to live basically and i've always very much been a solo income household i've never shared my bills so to speak with anyone else so that kind of went by the wayside obviously the pandemic happens etc etc and then we roll forward and here we are so in that time the funding routes and the funded routes into teacher training has changed now this is not for every subject but thankfully design and technology was one of them they are essentially if you want to go in and train to be a teacher and obtain your qualified teacher status with pgce which is the postgraduate certificate of education in the UK, you are once again eligible for the student loan that pays your fees. You are also um, eligible for a student maintenance loan, so a contribution towards associated costs for the year. And you're also eligible now for certain subjects for a bursary to train. And it's a 10-month bursary that is paid out from October to June And the amount you get paid is dependent on the subject that you want to go off and train for. So all of that was looking really, really positive. And I know there are some Americans are going like, no, student loans. No, no, guys, it's okay. Like our student loan system is a lot more forgiving than yours. Um, And we do not run to the rates that yours do. Ours are very much capped um, and are easily, well, (laughs) Ours are very much kept and controlled and it's okay. Like, breathe. American viewers, just breathe. Breathe for a second. It's okay. We are not punished as you guys are for pursuing further education or higher education by a very, very dodgy student loan scene. So that was all going on. And you had to write statements and you had to pick your institutions that you wanted to go train at and, you know, where would you be interested in doing your two placements and where would you be interested at the one day at university you'd have to spend. So I had to do a lot of research and I'd not written a personal statement in like years. So I wrote my personal statement, did my institutions, dug out all of my exam certificates. This was all going on. We're now at the end of March and I spoke to uh, someone who I consider to be a mentor and is a mentor of mine and we double checked everything and the only thing that was lacking um, in his mind was the fact that I didn't have any in-school teaching experience and that might let me down but what I did have was involvement with and what I do have is involvement with the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme I am a qualified assessor for silver and bronze level that allows me to go out and do lots of hiking and I actively work with young people um, encouraging them to get outside and and self-develop I um, that was obviously all paused during COVID because you couldn't really do any of that Um, so a lot of my experience was pre-COVID and I also had 
um, a countryside leader award, which is kind of a certain level of qualification that means you can hike at a certain kind of degree anyone who kind of does hiking and outdoorsy stuff will know what these words are anyone who's interested um literally just google those terms and it will bring up the information this video might go off in a spiral of tangents if i try and explain every single one so so that's that was the only thing that missing so i applied submitted my application it was during the as the schools went off to break for easter so there'd obviously be no one in and i applied but very much thought that because I don't have the in-school teaching experience, I am probably not even going to get through to an interview stage. So I thought, right, if I don't get through to an interview, I'm not even going to mention it because I'm going to have to try and then find a job in a school as a teaching assistant or one-to-one -one kind of coordinator or just something like that. And then I go again next year. Like, this is all for a September 2023 start. This is not an immediate start as well. So there was all of that going on and then in the interim the part-time retail job that I worked for that I would say objectively speaking I don't earn a lot of money from which I'm going to preface <laughs> that before I say what's next came out and with two or three announcements we've normally been paid above minimum wage at that job and the pay rise this year was only two minimum wage wage obviously the directors got a payout of course they did and the store managers got a pay rise but crew and store assistants did not we only went up to standard minimum wage which didn't sit well with me if we're being brutally honest we then got instructions saying that any staff members who are reselling either company clothing or clothing that could be attributed to our um, competitors which I mean, of our store of 11 people, four of us were. Um, this is to stop because you could pretend you are definitely in breach of contract because it's a conflict of interest. If you are actively reselling, then your focus is no longer on the job in hand and you are also could potentially be accused of uh, fraudulent activity if you cannot provide a purchase receipt for every single item that you've sold, specifically if it's brand related. And I worked for a brand and work for a brand that has a high resale value and you know you wear what you wear until it fits or you've bought something and it's not you know six months later you come to wear it and it's just not really you so you thought okay well I'll, I'll resell it on and get a bit of money back so no so all four of us were pulled in and sharply questioned and instructed essentially to stop completely reselling that our reselling accounts would be monitored, that if we were found to be listing and selling any more, then um, it would be an immediate disciplinary action, etc., etc. Now, if we're being really blunt, I've earned more off reselling than I have from this job over the past four months. So that didn't um, go down too well with Nicole here. And then came the other thing. This is kind of the third nail in the coffin of that job, which was all staff were expected to use and spend their discount each month, that you had to be wearing something from the current season's collection. Well, we have about eight collections because we were a large-ish store. And you also uh, were not allowed to wear anything that was older than three months, which just absolutely made me blow a gasket so all of this was going on i'd been promised overtime the overtime did not was not materializing overtime was going to manager's best friend who was hired without an interview on the basis that manager worked with this person years ago so overtime was going to manager's best friend and it was very much a case of doing and commuting four days to do four hour shifts uh losing the days bowie had had a little bit of an entanglement with uh the next door but one neighbor's cat called clive bowie and clive do not get on it's not a bonnie and clyde situation where you know they're they're friends for life it's 
Bowie and Clive fight viciously whenever they see each other. Normally, his mum and I manage to just avoid the meeting, but sometimes we don't always. So he'd lost that fight. He always loses the fight. He's all mouth and no trousers, honestly. Um, but it meant that he was then getting very, very clingy. He had started to... Um, it affected his bowels a little bit. He was off his food. Um, so I didn't know what I would be coming back to every time I left the house and it was every time I left the house and then it was still going guys and then this is all what's happened in the last two weeks so that's going on with work the overtime isn't there we've been instructed to stop reselling we've been told we need to start spending money that the pay rise was insulting because it wasn't a pay rise it was a you legally now have to pay us this um or you would just keep us on the same amount and then my car battery completely died so um i'd had a couple of problems things were seizing up the battery was a little bit slower to respond but i put that down to you know not having done a drive for a little bit and then um it just didn't start at all so my dad came over tried to jump start me the jump start started but as soon as i turned the ignition off and then attempted to restart it hadn't held its charge at all so that's been going on so i now have a completely dead car so i can't commute at all and then <laughs> are we keeping track of the and thens guys and then i find out that despite being told otherwise um i actually had the equivalent of 680 pounds worth of holiday that i'd been told i wasn't entitled to that was all going to expire at the end of this month and i just went i've been asking to use this holiday had been trusting my manager when i said um that you know have i got any holiday to use no you've not you've not accrued any and, and felt that was quite odd because i hadn't been away and used a lot i'd used the odd day here or there but the way it works is if you you work overtime you accrue more holiday so i felt that was quite odd i hadn't been able to access the internal system due to technical ish stuff and um when i finally did i threw a temper tantrum that nicole would have been at seven years old very very proud of so that happened <laughs> i absolutely hit the roof so i handed him my notice with immediate effect so bear with me because i know you're all just gone oh nicole what are you doing what have you done Bear with me while I just make a quick editing note. Um, so I, I, I just went, no, I earn more off reselling than I do in this job. This job is costing me money in petrol each day. It's now going to potentially cost me money in um, having to buy things that I don't need to buy. And spending is already an area that like I struggle to keep a lid on um i've got things going on at home the stuff and developments with elderly relatives i've now got a car that's not working so i would have then had to spend out more in public transport because rural areas and public transport is expensive and slow and i just went no i'm not losing this 600 odd quid because you want your budget you want to hit your budget basically so i left last wednesday and I, the next day, I got an interview for two teacher training roles. So I picked three. I applied for three. There was the option to apply for four. There was no fourth choice that I felt was suitable, would have really fit me. And within three minutes of each other, I got an invitation to interview for my first and second choice. Both on the same day both at the same time, both at one end of one city and the other end of another city. So um, one has thankfully moved to May and I'm going for my first choice one on Wednesday of this week. And it's because I've got the interview that I'm actually telling you that this is happening-ish. So in terms of where that leaves me, <laughs> because obviously you know there's stuff going on so i'm going to be keeping an eye out for full-time roles i 
We'll also, though, be looking at basically just self-employed income. I have the freelancing that I can connect back to. If I want to take on any films, I can. I will have some universal credit income, as I've said. It's not a lot, but it might cover, um, you know, a sum of my bills. My council tax will reduce as a result of my income going down. The selling... And I mean, I call it reselling, but it is just de-stashing at the end of the day. I am going through and I am attacking the house like there is no tomorrow. Um, I have my annual rental inspection coming up anyway. And realistically, in about a year's time, I'm not going to be in this property. So I want to know that whatever I move with is anything that I want to keep and value. And I have accumulated so much crap and so many things that actually it can all go. Like, I'm going to sacrifice it, it can go. So if there's an opportunity that comes up in terms of a full-time role somewhere nearby, I will go for that. Um, in terms of the car and how that can be repaired, mum and dad have said that they are going to look after that for me. Um, I didn't actually ask them. I was more like a case of, okay, well, what does what does a new battery mean if it's potentially not the battery? Is it the alternator? Is it a starter motor? Is it a cable somewhere? Like, what does it mean? And they were just like, look, don't worry, we'll take care of it. So that's very nice of them. I've not asked them. Um, so... I will find out if that ends up becoming something that I need to repay them for or if it's being done as a, a gift. I don't know that yet. So my debt may temporarily increase. Um, and all being well, I will be training as a design and technology teacher from September onwards. And therefore, I will have bursaried income and then every term so across three times a year i will then have an additional boost in terms of a small lump sum payment of just shy of four thousand pounds as well but all of those numbers i will drill down into if i am accepted onto the scheme there's no point working with theoreticals at the minute i have been looking at i'm going to say like i've been looking at dave ramsey i don't believe in the absolute like punishment and deprivation method but what I do have to acknowledge is that me putting myself into situations where I can spend if I'm feeling emotionally ish the cat not being great the car not working properly frustrated and angry about situations at work um, anxious and worried about getting accepted onto a teaching interview and concerns over kind of elderly family members and things like that that encourages spending from me those are all just normal triggers that I think would make even a non-spendy person go, oh, and my mum is not a spendy person and even she's been emotionally spending because there's a lot going on there. So if I put myself in, envir in an environment where I have access to things to buy, I'm going to spend. So what I have said to Coffee Friend is I'm really sorry, I need to go cold turkey for a couple of months. We can't have coffee together. We can still message, we can set up a Zoom and have remote coffee, but every time I go and see you for a coffee, I end up popping into Wilco's or I pop into like the works and I just spend on crap and bits that I don't think I need because it's the experience of having a coffee and then having a mooch and going for a spend. And I can talk about this quite openly. I know what I'm like. And if I add in the emotional triggers and the things like that that I've just discussed it's just a bit of a melting pot and now I actually just need to be bringing money in particularly if I'm either going to have a debt increase or I um you know have no set job and I need to get rid of stuff like I need to get rid of stuff I've got so much stuff like this here is just a lot of stuff and I've not even yet started working with the the hauls that you saw me do in terms of the card and the scrapbooking and things like that it's I need to spend a bit of time at home I need to gut my house I need to sacrifice things I am not going to sell so much that the cat thinks it's next Dave Ramsey what's it he says sell so much that the kids think they're next well I have no kids thank goodness for that because I think they'd be costing me a fortune um and equally I am not going to sell the cat I'm not going to give that up but I do understand the methodology behind 
you know, get rid of things that you don't need that don't serve you. So that's what I'm doing. And I have made, when I do my, I still need to film my March budget for you catch up. And when I do my April budget catch up, you'll see that actually the amount of money I earn through reselling versus my part time job, it's not worth keeping that part time job on for a six hour contract a week, which is what I was on fighting for overtime against a nepotistic, if that's even a word, favoritistic, if that's even a word system. It's, no, I don't need that fight. I literally got there a Wednesday night last week and went, you know what? I don't need this. I haven't got the energy to deal with this. I don't need this. I'm done. I'm done. So there's lots of things that I can do to bring income in and I need to do an updated income sheet. It's in my budget binder and or my budget planner, I should say. And that's definitely something that uh, I want you guys to be part of because I really want to develop not another budget into something. So there will be, and I'm currently working on creating a website and not another budget website that will not initially have products for purchase available for sale. I, I need to try and like clear stuff out of my house first. Um, but what it will do is it's actually going to have some blogs and some blog posts because there are some things that I like talking. I like chatting to you guys. I feel like I'm having a chat with you now and I can, you know, visualise my American viewers going, oh my gosh, she's going into student debt. What on earth is she on doing? And I can visualise my UK viewers going like, oh God, the battery's gone in her car. That's going to cost her a fortune and minimum. Like I can, I can just, I can see you guys across like the proverbial divide. And I just felt like I can work better in a system that suits me more that's a bit tailored to me so I do have my phone to one hand at the minute because I am waiting on a call back from the mechanic so you might hear that going on um so that is that is going on there sorry I'm just getting some updates uh we've had an elderly family member have a fall He's okay, he's fine, but because he's elderly and this is not the first fall, he's just being checked out. So there's a lot that's going on at the minute. Anyone who's kind of has elderly family members in their life, you know that once they start having falls, it's just a spiral, basically. Um, so that has all been going on. And I was just like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. Why am I fighting this? I'm completely done. So I went, yeah. I'm actually, do you know what? I know how to manage money from inconsist income, inconsistent sources. I want to spend time doing things that I love. I can't go anywhere because I'm pretty much grounded for now. Thankfully, my village, you know, has a decent sized and well equipped co op. I can get to the post office. I can, like, I, I can drop all my parcels and all my orders off. I can actually spend time now and put a selling structure in place rather than, like, grabbing a window here or there after work because the sun's out for an hour and a half and I can get into the garage and I can actually start to develop not another budget so where I was polling you guys and asking you guys for feedback as to what you feel would be like a really good set of beginner budgeting tips that's what I'm going to develop like I want that to be accessible through the blog where actually it's just a page and you can just download whatever you want to print out you don't need to purchase you don't need to enter any card details it means that if I do it that way I don't have to pay for um, a blog site or kind of anything like that I can upload blog posts because I have written about exactly how I was feeling when I was writing that resignation and I talked about that I can talk a little bit more and write a little bit more about money and mental health and the challenges that I find that I found in a way that actually I don't feel physically comfortable maybe verbally expressing I can write in response to a really kooky budgeting article that I either want to debunk or explore further I can just express and try and grow not another budget into hopefully something that's just a little bit more. And eventually, if I have time, there may be, you know, physical products that someone can buy. I may actually do something with all of those bits of paper and things that I've got there. I can develop stuff like this, which I made something for myself. Maybe not like that, but maybe, I don't know, like... 
I can do and develop things that people may want to purchase, but I initially want it to be like a really good, this is actually how you face up to your debt. Because I, the video I'm most proud of is my debt confession video, because that is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to film and ever have to do in my life. And the an anonymity of it makes it really, really easy to do made it easy to do the fact that i wasn't telling friends and family but i was telling strangers on the internet like that an anonymity was everything so it's a little bit like there are things that i want to turn not another budget into not necessarily a budgeting support network not necessarily a shop um but more of a community that's what i really would love i want to turn not another budget into a community because i know i've got that here i see the same people commenting in my comments every single week and even though i don't reply to you because i'm generally crap at replying to comments i've decided um i i'm there and i see them and i have a chuckle and i mentally respond go to write out a reply and then never do <laughs> i can write about the specific challenges that um you know, I can write about emotionally spending in a more concise way than maybe I can talk about in a video because I can actually write it, feel overwhelmed, walk away, come back. You know, I can proofread and I can proofread, whereas actually I've already like made a fluff up in this video, which if I've remembered to edit out, I've edited out. And, you know, I, that doesn't then have to like stop the flow, so to speak. There are things that... I want to do and I want to develop and I want to give back to the community that's helped me get to a thousand subscribers and has helped me become monetized to the people in my comments who give really good tips and advice to the other budgeters and the other vloggers out there that um, just keep me inspired to keep on going because there have been absolutely times this past week where I was like I i'm just gonna go buy a prada handbag not that i am interested in prada or that i want a handbag but it, that it was that element of like the example of i want to go and buy something completely outrageous just now because it, it that, that tiny moment of dopamine would just make everything better and i was just like mm, no like no so that is what is going on. Bowie is okay. Um, since I've been at home for the past five days, he's been much better. He's not been feeling as... Um, he's not been as clingy, but he has been really, really, really... Like, he knows that he's not allowed to sit on my pillow, up by my neck or by my head. I have quite severe asthma and quite severe other lung conditions. And he was just straight away... I know I'm not meant to do this, but I'm really upset, mummy, so I need to be with you. Um, so there was there was that. He um, definitely is feeling better. I feel brighter and feel lighter. I was mentally and emotionally ready to leave this job in February and then the other job left me. <laughs> So I sort of clung on and didn't really, um, kind of lost my love for it, lost my love for the brand. I lost my enthusiasm for the product because I couldn't afford the product. I'm at the point where I really want to aggressively start tackling my debt and getting my costs and expenses down. I did a food shop at the start of, start of April. It was meant to be a smallish shop that meant I could basically then carry on living off of my freezer and my pantry. And that smallish shop was £80. I filled two and a half bags for life. I didn't buy brands. I didn't go for the multi-buy offers. I just stuck to my list. And I came out of the supermarket and I went with my neighbour and we carpooled. And she's, we've been trying to do that a lot more. Um, when one goes, like, you know, the other one will try and go with, and then the next person, next week, the other person takes, for example. And we both just said, well, we'll just, we just won't eat again. Like, we just, we'll just stop eating, because this is ridiculous now. This is really, really, really getting ridiculous. And, you know, how much is too much? How much is not enough? 
you, like you know I've, I've i've talked about the value that going for coffee with coffee friend is but actually i do just have to accept that like i can't do this right now i can't it's not you it's me i literally need coffee space because if i don't i'm going to be spending money that i don't have and you've got that money and you've got that and that's absolutely great but i can't do it i just can't do it right now we need to meet up again in a couple of months just give me a couple of months to be at home to be sorting out to finally get on top of all of my rubbish and I mean I know I'm chatting away here but like even just me sorting out these budgeting challenges I'm like going okay but do I kind of want this here do I want this there wait what am I doing again and so all of that like it has I struggle with overwhelm it's linked to my neurodivergency which again I want to write and I want to talk about but I'm probably going to write about it more than I verbalise it. Um, it's linked to my neurodivergency. I really, really struggle with overwhelm. And I had the worst week last week. Um, I'm on a waiting list for medication. That waiting list is two years, at least, in the UK. Um, I... And just completely all of the tools and all of the things I'd worked really, really, really hard to like put into place just disappeared. And I just thought I don't for a six hour job. I don't need this stress. I don't need this stress. I will earn more money by not doing this job because the time I get back means that I can generate income through that time. You know, I can spend time and I can write the blog post that I want to write and I can do the things in the house that just completely like mean that I lose track because I come in and, and I don't do it like I I will quite often end up with three or four days worth of washing up and it's only when I run out of teaspoons mugs and glasses that I then really do anything about it because I just sit there and go with everything else that I've got to do I don't I know <laughs> I don't want to be doing this right now <laughs> so that is where I've been and that is what has been going on it's yeah it's been a week and then you add in like a video that's just not like formatting properly and I've done nothing different and you go okay right sorry guys I just need to walk away for a second and then we've got another and then you know I'm going through the garage and I'm sorting out my stuff and uh, you'll have seen that like apart from the preview of the preps cupboard I've not really done much more with that um, and I had to stop the garage because I had a, I ended up having another seven-year-old temper tantrum because the mice had gotten to everything and it then became a case of right everything needs to be in plastic storage and how much more do I need to spend on plastic storage for a problem that I can't stop I can't stop these things right I live in the country I live right next door to a small holding the animal feed is stored in the person's garage that backs onto mine. There's no... Like, I can't stop this. Literally can do nothing about this. Can't control this situation. Again, brain overload. So I just went, right, do you know what? I'm completely and utterly... I need to walk away. Because I'd already spent, in February, something like £100 on plastic storage. That should be more than enough. For two 145 litre heavyweight storage and four 90 litre clear storage tubs from Wilkinson's. Like that, in theory, should be enough. Between that and all of the other things that I had myself, like I should be fine. I should be absolutely fine. I should be laughing. I should have an excess of storage and I should be here sitting saying to you guys, I spent too much on storage, guys, and I've got, you know, loads left over, which you can always use. But like, no none not enough did not spend 100 pounds not enough to spend on storage so <laughs> i feel like i've been really candid i probably have been you're probably sitting there going like nicole are you okay i'm absolutely okay i do want to preface this by saying that i am completely fine it's just i've been long overdue a catch up with you guys and i really wanted to 
do that. Like I wanted to catch up. I wanted to fill you in on why I've been a little bit quiet. I wanted to tell you about the potential opportunities that may be coming my way if uh, you are prone to... So I very much have a when one door closes, another one opens mentality. And I also believe that the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, whoever, whatever deity or whatever belief system you, you subscribe to never gives you more than what you can handle. And the getting the notification of the two interview offers the literal next morning was just really reaffirmed that this was the right that I'd done the right thing. As as bad as I felt, because I literally exited the work WhatsApp group, didn't say goodbye to anyone, um, just submitted my notice, so it was there for her the next day. I just went, yeah, this is like I am I am done. Like I'm I'm like she can say what she wants to say. I don't I don't care. Um so that is where I've been. I'm going to see you in the next video to uh, when I will actually show you what I've sorted through all of this because this has now run to 40 minutes and I feel like that is long enough. But that's a little bit of a catch up on where I've been and what's going on. I will expand on some things in terms of the income. I've actually done like a structured plan for what I'm going to be selling and where and I will take you through that because someone, some of you guys may find that useful if you look around your house and go, where on earth do I start? Um... If you are interested in any of the shorts or the organising, a lot of the organising tidying videos are going to be over on the shorts section. I'm going to try and just build up a little bit more because I, I kind of like it, maybe, I think. This video, as I say, is going to be coming out today. And I look forward and eagerly anticipate all of your comments down below. If I don't reply, it's not you, it's definitely me. Um, but if you do have, I'm going to continue to put that call out. What are your top five budgeting tools for an absolute beginner? Take yourself back to when you um, first had to budget for the very first time. What are the five things that you found most useful? There is no right or wrong answer. I am just collating data. There will also be a poll out over on the community tab as well. If you could uh, fill that in or vote, I would really, really appreciate it. But for now, I'm going to love you and leave you and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.